What is up, everybody? My name is Matt. Welcome to the channel. Today, I'm going to be making a tier list ranking of every single Leatherface kill in the entire Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise. Leatherface has 40 kills in the franchise, so we're going to be going through all 40 of them and ranking them on a tier list. The tier lists are as follows. So, the top, the upper echelon, the creme de la creme, the best in the franchise is going to be labeled the Saw is Family. And the second one, which is, you know, a kill that would be labeled for me as like fun, you know, entertaining, pretty brutal. Maybe not necessarily, you know, the best in the franchise or something that blows me away, but a solid kill would be decent barbecue. That's going to be the category for that one. And then, you know, a kill that's just so-so. It's not the worst in the franchise. It's not necessarily completely off-screen or completely, you know, uh, just, you know, doesn't tie into the story at all or anything like that, but just something that's just like, all right, you know, kind of passes the time, pads the stats a little bit, is going to be labeled as Dull Chainsaw. And then the worst kills in the franchise, either kills that I think are just flat out stupid, off-screen, are completely useless to the storyline or whatever have you, it's going to be they're going to be labeled out of gas. So let's just get right into it. So we're going to be kind of starting from the first movie all the way to Texas Chainsaw 2022, the newest movie, and uh, kind of going in order here. And uh, so let's just kick it off right now with Kirk. The first kill in the franchise, in my opinion, the most memorable kill in the franchise, the most shocking kill in the franchise. The kill to me that makes me still to this day feel a little squeamish, makes me kind of just kind of do a stank face and, you know, just feel a little uncomfortable because it really truly gives you that livestock feeling, you know, a human being slaughtered like a cow would be slaughtered, you know, which ties into so many underlying themes in the original Texas Chainsaw movie. And it's just a brutal, shocking kill. You get to meet Leatherface, one of the main, most iconic, you know, villains in horror history for the first time with this kill. You get to see Leatherface's creepy mask. Kirk, of course, shakes and, you know, is, is, is like seizing because, you know, he got hit over the head with the sledgehammer and then gets dragged away. Leatherface slams, you know, the iconic metal door. Just the whole thing is epic. So, of course, I got to put Kirk's death Kirk's kill in the Saw is family. Have to. It's just too good. Too iconic, too good. Kicks off the franchise, brutal, everything. Next up, all right, is going to be Pam. So, of course, Pam gives us the iconic ass shot in the movie that, uh, you know, one of the most famous shots in horror history. Um, so, Pam's kill, not quite on the same level as Kirk's. And with some of these kills, I'm just going to be kind of winging it. You know, I haven't really thought about this ahead of time. So we'll think about some of these just kind of on the fly. And, you know, Pam's kill, she, you know, got put on the meat hook, which is very brutal, iconic in the original movie as well. Of course, you know, kind of kicks off the whole trope in the franchise of the meat hook in some ways, you know, and then, but she survives. She does have to watch, um, what is it, Kirk get sliced up right in front of her, which is pretty brutal, but she gets thrown in the, in the freezer. And then of course, you know, Jerry finds her later in the freezer, but it's one of those where it's like, I guess she died. You know, we would assume she probably got fucking eaten up. Right. So, but it's one of those, you don't definitively see her die, but yes, you do still get the meat hook. It's still iconic. Um, because you do get that meat hook and then she watches Kirk get chopped up. So I'm going to say, you know, Pam actually, you know, even though we presume her dead, it's not necessarily definitive. I think Pam, uh, to me, I would probably, I'm going to put Pam's death in decent barbecue. Just for the simple fact of when she gets tossed on that meat hook. The first time I watched this movie, I remember it was just one of those moments you're just like, damn, crazy. So on to jerry the driver coming up next so jerry similar to kirk comes into the house and is like where the hell are my friends and jerry gets bashed over the head with leatherface's sledgehammer kind of like kirk in some ways so you know and you would assume you know jerry of course died kind of similar to pam 
Yeah, I mean, you assume he would, and you would assume that uh, Jerry, like the others, got eaten as well. Um, I'm going to actually say Jerry's is going to be dull chainsaw for me because it doesn't quite have the shock factor of Pam's, you know, getting tossed onto the meat hook. It's still brutal, of course, like just getting smashed over the head and then Leatherface after the kill, like kind of goes off. It's like, what's happening here? These people are invading into my house. I probably shouldn't be killing them, but I'm supposed to kill them because we need the food and we're cannibals and we're sick fucks. But still, um... So you get the whole scene with all that, but Jerry's not quite as brutal, in my opinion, um, compared to Pam's especially. So up next, of course, is going to be Franklin. So Franklin, to me, is uh, one of the most iconic kills in the franchise. You know, him, uh, Franklin, and uh, Sally are looking for their friends or like, what are we going to do? I mean, you're in a wheelchair, but still, regardless, we're going to go out. We're going to go through these weeds and try to figure out what the hell is going on. So they do. And uh, Franklin <laughs> has the bad luck. You know, Sally gets away, but Franklin, um, Leatherface goes ham on Franklin. It's just one of those creepy shots. Obviously, it's a great jump scare. Arguably, you know, next to Kirk's the second best jump scare in the franchise. Um, it's a brutal kill. It's the bloodiest kill in the first movie for sure. Franklin's nice enough also to light up his death for us. That was cool. Um, with his own flashlight. It's just a shocking, like brutal kill. Definitely. I mean, and not to mention, I mean, like, you know, kind of like the dude that gets the machete in the face in um, Friday the 13th Part 2. It's like also kind of shocking when somebody gets killed and they're in a wheelchair, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just adds a little something to it. So, Franklin, despite Franklin being pretty annoying throughout most of the movie, that's still going to go and saw his family for me. I'm putting Franklin there. So, all right, that's it for the Leatherface kills in the first movie. Moving on. So, in the second movie, we start off, you know, with Buzz and Rick the Prick. Of course, the two dudes, the two yuppies in the car calling Stretch's radio station and um yeah definitely leads to one of the most brutal kills in most of the movies actually definitely a very brutal kill especially when you're thinking about the first few movies in the franchise but yeah so buzz's kill buzz's kill is actually going to go for me in the saw's family as well do i want to put it there do i want to put it in saw's family i mean he gets his head chopped. The head like opens up. Tom Savini, I think, was doing the effects on this kill and like blew a blew a um, what is it? Blew a um, a balloon to kind of make the head kind of go up on its own. It's super bloody. Rick looks over and Rick's like, "Holy shit!" And even uh, even Buzz is like, "What is happening?" As the blood is running down his face. You know, I'm actually gonna put it in uh, decent barbecue. Because it's not quite that shocking. Um, it's very bloody. You know, especially when you compare it to the first movie, which is actually not that bloody. It's just more gruesome and unsettling. But I'm still going to put it into decent barbecue. Um, it's satisfying to see, you know, Buzz get killed, definitely. Uh, as one of those characters, you're like, all right, kill this guy already. Um, but yeah, so there we go. Decent barbecue there. Uh, Rick the Prick, though, um, is going to end up in... Mm, we don't see, if I remember correctly, we don't see any of Rick's death at all. They just find his glasses later on. So Rick is going to go in out of gas. It's going to be the first out of gas kill for me. Um, just because it's all off screen, you don't see really anything at all. Uh, I mean, of course, he contributes to the moment, but yep. Rick going in out of gas. So... Next up is going to be our old buddy, LG, who works at the radio station with Stretch, of course. LG gets it in this movie. Like, this poor bastard. He gets beaten over the head like 20-something times um, by nubbins and it, it, and just, just gets beaten up and filleted. And, you know, he's dancing with Stretch when he's all sliced up. And he just has a bad day. So, um, yeah, LG... You know, eventually just gives in to everything that happened and just kind of lays over and is like, I'm dead. 
And, you know, it, it's not necessary. Nothing memorable from LG's kill. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty pretty rough what he has to go through. Gets his, of course, gets his, his the skin on his face carved off by Leatherface. You know, turned into a mask and all that. Pretty brutal. Um, I'm still going to say that LG, though, is, is more of a dull chainsaw. Just because... When I, when I think about kills in the Texas Chainsaw franchise, the kills that I really enjoy, the kills that I look for in this franchise, they need to be kind of quick, brutal. I don't like the long, drawn-out, more torture kills. You'll see a lot of those in some of these movies, uh, especially in the third movie. So, yeah, I'm going to put it in Dole Chainsaw. It's just not that great. Plus, you know, you root for L. You don't want LG to die, right? So next up is actually going to be... Gina and Sarah. So we'll talk about Gina first. So Gina's in the next movie is just the kill that kind of opens up the movie, right? You don't really see anything. You just see like the sledgehammer slide into the screen and um, gets her head bashed. Well, actually, I think in this movie, if I remember correctly, it might be in the unrated version. You see her get dragged off with actually part of her head crushed. Um, I think, like I said, I think it's in the unrated version. I'm trying to remember correctly. I've mainly seen this movie in like the theatrical version you'd find on streaming and, and whatnot. But still, this kill is just going to be, for me, it's going to be just in Dole Chainsaw for me. Uh, like I said, you get to see a little bit of the aftermath. It opens up the movie. It's kind of a cool opening in some ways. Um, but yeah, it's not that great. It's going to be dull for me. It's not really that, you know, something that you, you remember from that movie. It's not a memorable kill by any means. So next up is um, actually going to be Sarah. And Sarah's definitely one of those characters in the movie in Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw 3. It's just a throwaway character. One of those characters like, what are you even doing here? I mean, I get it. You're linked to this person, but you're kind of just... So she's living in the woods because she escaped and living off of rats or something like that. But anyways... So Sarah's kill was completely cut down by the ratings board. She was supposed to get cut in half in the movie. That's what we we're supposed to see, but we didn't see it. She's like pinned up against the tree, gets killed. Her, her death is going to be out of gas for me. It's a pretty shitty kill. Not great by any means. Moving on to Barry. So this is actually going to be in the next generation. Good old Barry. You know, if you remember Barry, he's the one that tells us, you know, He's got, he's got a line for every time a girl declines his invite. You know what I mean? His invite to get in their pants. He's always got some sort of a line. He's always like, you know, if you don't, if you don't, you know, men can get prostate cancer if you don't put out, um, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, Barry's pretty funny in the movie, but Barry's kill, you know, obviously clearly inspired by some of the kills in the first movie. He just gets hit over the head and then dragged away. His eyes are still kind of open in the kill, but... It's one of those, I guess he's dead. So Barry's going to be in Dole Chainsaw for me. Anytime you get the whole, I mean, the whole, to me, the sledgehammer kill in Texas Chainsaw, of course, is iconic. Of course, is like a signature Leatherface move. Um, but it's hard to put the sledgehammer kills as long as you see them in the out of gas, in the out of gas category for me, just because it's just brutal. Like you're getting your head bashed in by a sledgehammer by a big ass dude. Like, that's pretty crazy. So, yep, Barry's going to go in Dole Chainsaw for me. Next up is going to be our favorite Texas Chainsaw. Old couple who loves to drink and drive on a Saturday afternoon. It's going to be Mr. and Mrs. Spottish. This is going to be a duo kill because we assume they died when their RV at the end of Next Generation gets flipped over by Leatherface. So, we'll kind of just credit that kill to Leatherface and assume they died. You know what I mean? They're old. Something, um, they probably broke so many goddamn bones in that in that car crash, right? They're dead. Yeah, so yeah, Vilmer and Leatherface essentially causing the RV to crash over, and uh, we assume they died. But that's going to be an out of gas. It's a fun moment, but still. I mean, you don't really see anything. You just presume they're dead. Nothing really happens. So nothing really to say there. But the next one is going to be very, very different than that death. The next one, we are moving on to my favorite movie in the franchise, the remake from 2003, and we are going to move into one of the most memorable kills in the franchise for me, one of the most memorable moments, which is going to be Kemper's death. Kemper, 
you know, is Jessica Biel's boyfriend in the movie. And uh, his is brutal. He not only gets bashed in the head and then you get the whole seizure moment, but it's a big ass sledgehammer. So that just adds to it. It's even more brutal than Barry's, of course. Uh, you know, not quite as shocking and gruesome as Kirk's or anything like that, but uh, better than Jerry's in my opinion. But yeah, Kemper's death is insane. And then on top of it, you get that whole moment because of his death. Leatherface puts Kemper's, you know, face on his face and wears it. It's a holy shit moment. Like that shot in the movie is probably the best shot of the entire movie. And it's a great movie. Uh, easily one of the best remakes ever in the genre, in, in my opinion, and just a cool thing. So Kemper's kill, ah, to me, that's going to go in the Saw's family for me, for personal reasons, because I just enjoy it so much. A damn good kill. All right, next up is going to be Pepper, you know, also from the remake, of course. And uh, Pepper's like the, if you remember the, like the hippie chick, but she um, gets uh, sliced in half by Leatherface's chainsaw. It's kind of gruesome. It's kind of gory. Um, you know, it's not great. Uh, it does lead into Kemper's, where you see Kemper's face on Leatherface, which is cool. I like how the feathers and stuff kind of come up uh, from her jacket. People always wonder, like, what the hell are these feathers coming from? It's because she has a down jacket on, I think. Right, guys? I remember correctly. So you see like these feathers and stuff. It kind of adds to the whole moment because then it zooms in on Kemper's face and you've got like feathers floating around. It's cool. It's a cool moment. But I mean, her kill is not great. So I'm going to say it's dull chainsaw for me. You know, it, it's just not a great kill. Nothing really happens there other than that, that good shot after the kill. So after Pepper is going to be Andy. So Andy's kind of like the rip dude that's hooking up with Pepper. And um, Andy gets it in this movie. I mean, he's like LG. This guy gets beaten up, sliced and diced, and, you know, gets his leg cut off. Cut off. But, I mean, Andy's death is pretty damn dumb. Aaron, essentially, like, Andy is hung up in the basement, in pain, suffering, and Aaron decides to just put him out of his misery. And how does she decide to put him out of his misery? By giving him another slow and painful wound that he can suffer from <laughs> no i'm not gonna stab you in the heart or you know where whatever i'm just gonna stab you in the gut and let you bleed out even more maybe you know andy did something to her in the past and so she hated him so yeah dumb kill dumb kill i'm gonna say that kill is out of gas just a dumb kill it's brutal but dumb stupid so sorry andy Next up is going to be Morgan. Morgan is the obnoxious guy in the remake. Um, the rude one, rude to all the locals, kind of deserved it. Morgan gets it, gets, he gets fucked up. So Leatherface puts him onto the chandelier and then cuts right through the dude's groin. However, though, we don't see much. You know, it's really off screen. The movie focuses on the other kills some of the other kills in the movie definitely to to showcase i mean it's brutal but like i said mostly off screen so i'm gonna say that one's actually dull as well even though just the thought of it is pretty damn brutal so yep there's morgan's so next up is going to be the two detectives who were in the little home video that you get to see that leads into and one of those where you're kind of like i assume they died you know they're like checking the house to see if there's any anything left after the crime scene. It's the black and white video. Uh, I think they show it, what, at the beginning and the end? If I remember correctly, it's been a bit. But um, yeah, it's Detective Wallace and Detective Adams. So it's kind of a duo one, just like the older couple. And uh, that's one of those where it's a cool moment. It's creepy. It definitely adds. It, it's a good addition into the movie. I like that aspect, that look back and, and whatnot. And then they run into Leatherface, who I guess is hiding in the basement they didn't check the house thoroughly dumbasses yeah that one is going to be dull for me it's not quite out of gas because it's a cool moment but you don't see much so it's going to be dull for me so yep up next is going to be holden so holden is from um the prequel to the remake he is the nickelback looking biker prick 
who is kind of just in it for himself, doesn't give a shit about the other people who are dying in the house and just wants to go in to, to see what's going on with his girlfriend and uh, possibly get some revenge himself with his big ass Magnum. Uh, but his kill is my favorite in the movie. Yeah, Holden's is gonna be my favorite in that movie, but which category does it go into? So that's one of those, it's the one where Arlie Ermey is holding him down and then Leatherface, he falls onto the chainsaw and then Leatherface revs it and then pulls it up through him. It's a pretty damn brutal kill. Uh, definitely, yeah, definitely a memorable one in that movie. I'm gonna put that one as decent barbecue, actually. Yeah, it's a solid kill in that movie, in a movie that is very bloody, very brutal. It's the standout kill in the movie for me, if I remember correctly. So, yep, there you go. That's Holden. Holden, Holden. So next up is going to be the main guy, I guess you could say, in that movie, which is Eric Hill. And uh, Eric, <laughs> Eric has a bad day too. He has a bad day in this movie. So, yeah, he, he gets captured and then gets kind of like filleted out, not necessarily filleted, but like laid out on the table down in Leatherface's little like workshop from hell. And then just gets impaled with the chainsaw. Leatherface revs it. There is blood spraying everywhere. His girlfriend's hiding under the table, almost gets the chainsaw too. It's just a bloody ass moment and uh, a brutal kill for sure. Um, and then of course, that's when Leatherface wears his first human face, and it's Eric's face. You know, he's a good-looking dude, so I don't blame him, uh, right? But yeah, brutal kill. Uh, not necessarily a kill that I like. That movie is just... That movie is... It has some positives to it, but that movie is just... A lot of the kills are just for shock value in that, mo in that movie. They're not necessarily creative or interesting to me or that enjoyable for me. I'm actually going to say that kill for me is going to be Dole Chainsaw. Yeah, it's bloody, but it's just not that great, in my opinion. So next up is going to be Bailey. So Bailey is the girl who ends up essentially just like screaming the entire movie. She gets captured, um, but her kill is also brutal and, and super bloody. Leatherface slits her throat at the dinner table and yeah, with scissors, it's just a it's a bloody ass kill. And you can see it like opening up and everything like that. Yeah, it is nasty. Nasty, nasty. But yeah, Bailey's is gonna be, for me, it's still going to be in dull chainsaw for me because yeah, the way they utilize her character is really annoying. And then the way she goes out, it's a throat slit. Yeah, it's a brutal one. She like, basically gets her head cut off, but it's not that great in my opinion. So. Up next is gonna be her boyfriend, Dean. So yeah, Dean gets a pretty cool kill actually towards the end of the movie. Dean gets like lifted up as he's trying to uh, to help the, um, what's her name, the final girl, Chrissy. As he's trying to help Chrissy, he gets like impaled by the chainsaw and like lifted up and Leatherface revs it a bunch. It's a pretty cool kill. You know, he gets captured in the movie and uh, gets beaten up pretty bad but um yeah his kill's decent i guess dean's kill would it fall under decent barbecue though for me mm, it's kind of run of the mill it's not great mm, you know i'm actually going to reorganize this a little bit i'm gonna put this one down here i think that one deserves being out of gas i'm gonna put his up here you know, it's, no, it's actually decent. I think it's decent. It's a decent kill. Yeah, it's decent. It adds to the movie. It adds a little extra there at the end, a little more brutality. It's not just like a, a throat slit. He lifts him up, which I think is cool, especially when you compare it to Eric's kill. I think that whole aspect of it um, shows just how like big Leatherface is and how menacing he is in this movie and, this, and in those two movies. Um, I think it's a cool kill. Yeah, it's decent barbecue. Yeah, I'll put it there. Sounds good to me. So next up after Dean is actually going to be Chrissy. So Chrissy, you know, we think she's going to be the final girl in the movie. Uh, she's essentially getting away and we're like, check the back seat. Check the damn back seat. Mother face is in the back seat. 
impales her through the back with the chainsaw through the seat and then technically you could put the two cops that get ran over or the two people that get ran over in this whole exchange because she gets you know gouged through the back and then crashes the car into two people who happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time so that could be on this list you could say that's love of faces kill but forget it we're not gonna we won't put that in here but yeah chrissy's kill is um mm, does it deserve to be in decent barbecue though I think it does. I think it does. And the reason why is because you think she's going to be the final girl. Of course, when she gets in the car, it's pretty predictable that somebody's going to be in the car, right? Um, but I think it's a pretty fun kill. It's a pretty fun ending. I like how they're like, oh, final girl? No, no final girl. Sorry. I like that. Um, you know, you get the two people ran over because of it. And then the iconic shot of Leatherface like walking away from the whole thing down the street. I like that. Um, I like that, especially because Chrissy is a girl you could see, like, she's a very likable character. She's a good actress. She kind of checks a lot of the boxes in some ways for a pretty decent final girl. You know, she's not the greatest, but, um, so you think, my point is you think that she will probably continue on in the franchise. So that adds a little extra, you know, that she gets killed off. So I like that. And her kill is, uh, her kill is pretty fun, even though it's a little bit predictable. So I'm going to say decent barbecue for Chrissy. Works for me. All right, next up is going to be Daryl. So, oh, Daryl, the guy who, like, is Aber in an Abercrombie and Fitch model, but he's, like, a drifter at the same time in this movie. So, Texas Chainsaw 3D, the greatest horror movie ever made. So, yeah, Daryl. Yeah, he's the one. He screws over the others. Um, who would have known leaving a drifter in your house, your mansion, by himself? You know, what could go wrong, right? He's just a, a Boy Scout, right? Like you said. But his kill, um, his kill is kind of lame. Well, you do. I'm trying to remember in the theatrical version if you actually do see his head get bashed in. Even if you don't in the unrated, uh, I believe you do. So, I mean, he gets his head bashed in pretty hard. He's like trying to open up Leatherface's door in the basement. Leatherface surprises him, just beats him to shit with the, with the sledgehammer. Um, but it's not great. So I'm actually gonna put it as dull chainsaw. So I think that works for Daryl's. Um, up next is gonna be Kenny. Who killed Kenny? Well, Leatherface killed Kenny. And Kenny gets it. Kenny's is gonna be decent barbecue. Yeah. Kenny gets put on a meat hook and then gets chopped in half. Just completely sliced in half with the chainsaw. I mean, we see a lot of it too. And it's brutal, it's gory, and hell, Kenny was like the nice guy who cooked for everybody. Like shit, Kenny! But yep, it's going there, decent barbecue for Kenny. Up next is gonna be Ryan, played by Trey Songs. So Ryan, uh, you know, piece of shit in the movie, cheats on Alexandria Daddario. I don't know what the hell you're thinking, bud. But so Ryan's kill is like caused by Leatherface. Leatherface causes his car to crash. He dies in the crash, if I remember correctly, like bleeds out, essentially. It's a pretty lame kill. I do always laugh at that kill because Leatherface just like stands there and watches the car crash and then gives us like a Myers head, head tilt, kind of, if I remember correctly. But I mean, it's pretty dull. Does it deserve to be an out of gas? Yeah, it does. Sorry, Ryan. Up next is going to be Officer Marvin. So Officer Marvin, if you remember... He's the one who's like, yeah, this is a great idea. I'm going to go and I'm going to FaceTime the mayor while I'm looking through a house with a serial killer inside of the house. Who also, you know, little fact is uh, probably massive. We have heard and brutally kills people. So, yeah, let's FaceTime and also look through the house at the same time. Sounds like a great plan. So, Officer Marvin, you deserved it, buddy. But yeah, he gets actually hacked up uh, with a little axe, you know, uh, by Leatherface in the movie. It's uh, it's pretty brutal. I mean, um, yeah, he gets his uh, his face, if I remember correctly, his face gets carved off and Leatherface, I think, wears it at some point, if I remember correctly. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't go back and watch uh, 3D all that often. But but anyways, um, yeah, he gets hacked up pretty good by Leatherface with the little uh, with the little axe, which is not you know a little different for Leatherface, not the chainsaw, not the sledgehammer. But um, 
You know, he do get that funny moment where he accidentally shoots the other girl in the head when she surprises him. That's kind of a decent little moment, but does that really have anything to do with his kill? No, probably not necessarily, but yep. Officer Marvin, dude, you are going to go into out of gas. Yeah, it's just kind of kind of weak from what I remember from that kill. So, all right, up next is going to be Mayor Burt Hartman. Do yo thing, cuz. So, yeah, the mayor is above the grinder thing. I don't know if it's a meat grinder or it's an industrial grinder where you just throw metal and shit. You know, like what happened to old Mikey? Yeah, anyways, he gets his hands cut off, of course. Do yo thing, cuz. That's the line, the famous line before it. Um, and Leatherface chops off his hands and he falls in. It looks like some pretty terrible CGI, but it's, I mean, come on. You know, you get do your thing because obviously, you know, the mayor's a piece of shit. You hate him. It's fun. It's stupid and it's fun. I'm actually going to put it in. It's not going to go in out of gas for me. Oh man, do I want to put the mayor Burt Hartman in, in decent barbecue? Is it decent barbecue? I mean, Jesus, what are we talking here? Are we talking, this is peppered barbecue? Is this, you know, is this more vinegar based? Is this like, what are we talking here? You know, is this beef ribs? Oh man, pork shoulder. <laughs> Would May, does Mayor Burt Hartman deserve to be in decent barbecue with Kenny? With Kenny. I'm actually gonna put it there. Go ahead and hate me in the comments below. Go ahead, go ahead, I can take it. But Mayor Burt Hartman, because it's so stupid, that it's good. All right, moving on. All right, up next is going to be um, the post credits kill that we presume is a kill with uh, uh, Gavin and Arlene Miller, who were Alexandria Daddario's what uh, step parents or adopted parents in the movie, something like that. Definitely pieces of shit. And uh, but we don't see them get killed. It's a cool moment. It's a funny moment in the movie, but. You don't see anything. You just kind of assume that Leatherface probably cut the shit out of them. So that's actually going to go in out of gas for me just because, you know, it's just like, eh, it's fine. All right. Up next is going to be in Leatherface, the next movie. And it's actually going to be a kill that's one that you could maybe say is not Leatherface. Leatherface contributes to it, lures uh, Betty in, Betty Hartman in the movie. And then what Nubbins, I think, pulls the lever and the car motor falls on her and just crushes her. Pretty brutal. You know, that whole moment leading up to it where the little kid's wearing um, the like the the cow head is pretty, pretty memorable. But I, I would say it's dull. I don't think it deserves to be an out of gas. Like I said, is it a leather face kill? Maybe, maybe not. It's debatable. But, uh, but anyways, there you go. That is Betty. Next one is going to be Texas Ranger Hal Hartman. So her dad, his kills really, really damn bloody. If I remember correctly, he gets like his hand, his fingers chopped off. And then, um, and then Leatherface just like goes to town, puts the chainsaw into his chest. And it's just like revving it all over the place. Blood everywhere. Blood spraying back onto Leatherface. Very, very bloody. But is it, does, does it deserve to be in Decent Barbecue? Did I need another category in between Decent Barbecue and Dole Chainsaw? Who knows? But anyways, I'm going to put it into Dole Chainsaw because it's it's not great. Like, it's not one of the better kills in the movie or in the franchise or anything like that. It's just bloody. It's kind of there. Sort of memorable, I guess you could say. But, yep. All right, the last one in that movie is actually going to be Lizzie. Uh, pretty decent final girl in the franchise. Uh, somebody you root for, somebody you want to see survive at the end. Like, she's really, really nice. Doesn't really have anything coming to her, you know, based off of what she's been doing. But you get, like, a fun little... Oh, damn. They just cut her head off at the end of the movie. Yeah, so she... Leatherface is wearing, like, the, the leather strappy kind of mask, which is decent in the franchise, and then just chops her head off. Uh, the mom's like rooting him on and you know like a like a like a Pamela Voorhees kind of a vibe there and yeah you're like oh they just killed the final girl at the end of the movie even though they've done that in this franchise before it's still like a, it's a decent moment you know what I mean but um yeah I think it still deserves to be in dull it's just a okay moment kind of dull not great so there you go that's where it's going so Lizzie sorry
So up next is going to be in the newest movie, the first technically kind. And this is similar to some of the other kills I mentioned earlier. You know, it's one of those kills you could say it, it is Leatherface. It's not Leatherface. I'm going to put it on here because it is uh, my favorite kill in the movie in the Texas Chainsaw 2022. And um, yep, it's going to be the uh, Sheriff Hathaway when technically one of his like deputies accidentally shoots him in the neck, which kind of starts everything. Leatherface is in the back with the deputy, which how could that go wrong, right? Breaks the dude's arm, his gun goes off, hits the sheriff in the neck, the car crashes. And then later on, um, Leatherface like crushes his head, if I remember correctly. Yeah, pretty gruesome. It's uh, like I said, one of the more memorable moments in that movie, definitely. Outside of the bus scene, maybe the most memorable. Yeah, so a cool moment for sure and uh, a decent little kill. I don't think it deserves to be, even though I did just say decent little kill, does it deserve to be in decent barbecue? This one's kind of a tweener, you know? It's in between decent barbecue and dull chainsaw, I feel like for me. Yeah, I'm gonna put it into decent barbecue just because of the whole moment. It's a fun moment. I think it's pretty fun. Yeah, I think it's pretty fun. Uh, the next one is going to be Ruth, which is, it's gruesome. This is a bloody one. Like she gets, she's like beaten up from the car crash. You know, they're in the cornfield or the, the, you know, what kind of flower is that? The sunflower field. Thank you. The sunflower field. Um, you know, they crash. She's all beaten up. She's kind of stuck in the car. She's trying to stay quiet because Leatherface is creeping around doing his thing. And, um, and then Leatherface kind of surprises her. And then, uh, if I remember correctly, just, you know, basically just like guts her with a piece of glass from the car crash. Definitely one of those moments where you're just like, oof, that is brutal, but not a great kill. So I'm gonna put it into dull chainsaw. It's also not the worst, but not great by any means. Next one is gonna be uh, Dante. So, yep, Dante, the dude in the movie who does like the, ah, ah, has like the seizure. You know, when they first get into town, Dante's kill has some fun moments. You see his death kind of with the swaying door. You see a little bit of it. Leatherface surprises him. It's sort of brutal. Not a great kill by any means, though. Does it deserve, deserve to be an out of gas, though, for me? Hmm. I'd probably say it is. Yeah, it's pretty lame. Yeah, out of gas for that one. All right, the next one is going to be Richter. Richter, the guy that kind of catch you, catches you off guard because you think he's going to be one of the villains in the story, but he ends up actually being somebody who like empathizes with our final girl, who ends up kind of being cool and helps them a little bit. But this guy gets, I mean, like he goes into the house to try to help them and then just ends up getting the shit beaten out of him by Leatherface. His leg gets turned into like an origami project. Yeah, he just gets beaten to death with a sledgehammer. It's a brutal kill, a brutal moment. You know, she's trying to show him that Leatherface is hiding with the little, uh, with the mirror. It's pretty brutal. Does it deserve to be in decent barbecue though? Mm, I would probably say it does actually. I'm a sucker for like those like brutal limb, like when limbs get just snapped in a brutal way and you get to see it. I don't know. That kind of adds a little something to the movie for me. So yeah, Richter, there you go, buddy. Decent barbecue. All right, next up is gonna be Catherine. So Catherine is a throwaway character in the movie. She's like the lady from the bank, if I remember correctly, who just, I think, gave them the loan to get the town. I don't know how the hell you get an SBA loan on a fucking ghost town, but okay, sure. Um, I guess being a, you know, an influencer, you know, gives you a good credit score, apparently. But <laughs> uh, anyways, so yeah, Catherine. But Catherine's kill is... Yeah, brutal. She's the one who's trying to get out of the bus. Of course, the whole bus scene where everything's going down. It's blue. It looks cool. Kill after kill after kill after kill in that bus. I mean, of course you could. I didn't include the bus per se on this list because there's so many kills. Um, I'll just say what I would put the bus as, you know, just while I'm thinking about it. I would put the whole bus scene as like decent barbecue probably. But we'll specifically talk about Catherine. She's climbing out of the window, gets cut in half by Leatherface. You get the cool shot where the camera kind of rotates and then like half of her body falls down. You see some of like, you just see everything. It's pretty brutal. I'm actually going to put it as decent. Yeah, 
There's more decent uh, decent kills than I actually expected so far. Yeah, I'm going to put it in decent. It is definitely memorable. One of the more memorable kills in the last couple newer movies in the franchise. Definitely. Even though she's just like a throwaway character nobody cares about. Decent? Yeah. I think it deserves to be in decent, I would say. Okay. Our, our final two. So... Up next is going to be Sally Hardesty. Of course, you remember Sally from the final girl from the original movie who survived the original movie. They bring her back. So kind of like Halloween 2018, Sally is back. She doesn't really do a whole lot in this movie, though. And she kind of sacrifices herself. Yeah, she gets lifted up kind of like uh, this other dude in the earlier movie who gets lifted up in the beginning. Uh, she gets lifted up, it's pretty bloody, but she had so many chances to kill Leatherface earlier in the moment, kind of in that act of the movie, make some stupid decisions, and you're kind of like, really? You brought back Sally, one of the most famous final girls in the genre, just to do this? But anyway, specifically just to talk about her death, her kill, it's pretty dull. It doesn't deserve to be an out of gas, but I think it deserves to be in dull, in my opinion. So, all right, last up is going to be the last kill we've ever seen so far, you know, in 2024 in the franchise, which is going to be Melody, one of the more annoying characters in the movie. Um, and yeah, I mean, is it a shocking moment? Melody gets like essentially ripped out of their Tesla and then just gets her head chopped off and her sister has to watch it all go down. The CGI looks decent. It's an okay kill. It, it deserves to be in dull chainsaw. I mean, it's about as dull as it can get. It's not terrible. It's not great. It's not memorable. It's not even necessarily, I would say, good. It's just kind of like whatever. It's, it's okay. It looks decent. But there you go. Melody. That was the last one. So there you go, guys. It is, I mean, if you include some of the couples that were on here and like the duo thing with the two deputies and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's about, it's 40 kills if I remember correctly. So, yep, there you go. That is my tier list of the 40 Leatherface kills in the entire Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise. Hopefully I didn't miss any. Apologize if I did, but it's a lot. It's 40. Give me a break. But anyways, everybody, if you like Texas Chainsaw, um, content. I have got plenty of content about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise on my channel. Go ahead and check that out. I'll link a couple of those videos for you here. But yes, just in general, if you're a fan of horror content on YouTube, then I have got plenty of that as well on the channel. But again, my name is Matt. Thanks so much for watching my first ever tier list ranking of every Leatherface kill in the franchise. I'll talk to you all in the next video.